It's been a little over 10 years since the Bitcoin bust started, and it's been quite a ride. This guy here believes Bitcoin mojo is back, and now is the time to put some money to work. I tend to agree with him. Let's talk about why I decided to put money in Bitcoin. What's happening everyone? Welcome to Think Finance. My name is Raj and on this channel, I talk about personal finance, investment ideas, money management tips, and everything that impacts our money. I have a video discussing alternatives to stocks. In that video, I talk about Bitcoin and how it is speculation as opposed to real investment tool. I still think it is speculation, but I'm a bit more bullish now. Indeed, I'm bullish enough to put some real money to work. In this video, I will share my perspective on why I believe we should put some of our hard-earned money in Bitcoin. The world is mixed when it comes to Bitcoin and crypto in general. If you ask my friend Warren, he thinks Bitcoin and cryptocurrency is a rat poison, a mirage, and a gambling device. Jamie Dimon, CEO of JP Morgan Chase, said in the past that he would fire employees if he found out that they were investing in Bitcoin on grounds of stupidity. Since then, the bank has launched its own digital coin, JPM coin. Then you have the bulls of the world. Names like Richard Branson, Chamath Palihapitiya, Mike Novogratz, Elgore, and others have shared their support for crypto. Younger companies like Square and PayPal are also behind the bull story. Bill Gates started out as a bull, but recently has altered his position, saying such a currency can facilitate money laundering. In summary, it is still speculation. Either you're in or out. For those of you who struggle with Bitcoin and how it works, let me take a minute and simplify a bit. Let's start with something we all are familiar with, banks, Bank of America. As a customer, you make transactions, payments, withdrawals, and deposits. Bank of America logs your activity in their ledger. Remember accounting? Its employees make sure information is accurate, and for that, employees get a paycheck. The bank operations and procedures are governed centrally by our financial system. The system has put checks in place to ensure proper working of the bank. You, as a customer, don't have visibility to the detailed ledger, other accounts the bank has, and any other transactions the bank has made. For our financial system, banks are not required to provide that level of transparency. Now let's talk about Bitcoin and crypto in general. Think about this as an alternative to the banking system. In the world of Bitcoin, blockchain is the ledger. Any transactions you make are logged in this ledger. Bitcoin miners are like bank employees. They validate the transaction and create new blocks or records that eventually get entered into the ledger or blockchain. For the service, miners get rewarded via Bitcoins. The more transactions they validate, more the rewards. Consider this as a paycheck in the world of Bitcoin. Unlike our existing financial system, Bitcoin world is decentralized, does not have any governing body and is transparent, meaning you can view the ledger and any transactions out there. The identity, however, is hidden. This is a very simplistic view of understanding Bitcoin, and of course, there is more to it. For most of us, Bitcoin is nothing more than an app that provides a personal Bitcoin wallet, which allows us to send and receive Bitcoins. So here are the reasons why I decided to put money in Bitcoin. Many public and private companies have started to embrace Bitcoin as their reserve currency. MicroStrategy was the first to publicly announce their move. The company invested $425 million in Bitcoin during August and September. 
they see Bitcoin as a dependable store of value. Square scooped up 5K in Bitcoins worth $50 million earlier in October, saying Bitcoin can become a more ubiquitous currency in the future. Fidelity rolled out its first Bitcoin-focused fund in August, allowing its wealthier customers to invest in the crypto. But the biggest news came last week from PayPal when they announced that it will allow its 200 million US users to buy, sell, and store crypto assets on its platform. The company will also enable its 26 million merchants to accept crypto as a payment method starting in early 2021. This is huge. Think about it. Today, the largest Bitcoin wallets, something you need to access Bitcoin, account for a combined 132 million users. You throw in PayPal with its 200 million users, it's a big deal. PayPal also plans to expand the features to its Venmo app and international markets through the first half of 2021. Finally, the other big dog, Facebook, is also eyeing the digital currency space via Libra, which is more controlled. All of this means one thing, Bitcoin is here to stay. It's going to be extremely difficult for governments to ban something that has so much interest. As these big corporations find innovative ways to use the technology, interest in Bitcoin will continue to go up, which in turn will increase the value and price of Bitcoin. Then there are these other reasons that support the bullish story. Some argue that Bitcoin is a hedge against inflation. There can only ever be 21 million Bitcoins in existence. Unlike fiat currency, Bitcoin cannot be created or printed off thin air. This makes Bitcoin a deflationary currency, theoretically increasing its purchasing power every day. A hedge against inflation. Which brings me to my next point, scarcity. Gold has been a historic store of value primarily because of its scarcity. It is very scarce, making only 0.000031% of the Earth's crust while still costing close to $1,800 per ounce. Bitcoin shares many similar characteristics to gold. The world can have only 21 million Bitcoins, which over time will make it scarce and a good store of value. Chances are, with supply staying constant and demand rising, Bitcoin prices will keep grinding higher. Economics. Then there's this case for Bitcoin halving. This is probably a separate video, but here is a super quick summary. Remember I talked about miners and how they get rewarded via new Bitcoins? Well, in 2009, 50 Bitcoins were rewarded every 10 minutes. Every 210K blocks, or roughly every four years, the total number of Bitcoins that miners can potentially win is halved. This process will end when we have a total of 21 million coins out there, probably in the year 2140. The last halving took place in May 2020, and the reward was reduced from 12.5 to 6.25 Bitcoins. History suggests price rise significantly following the halving. More speculation to deal with. Like any other investment out there, it is very important to understand the risk you are taking on. Let's talk about the other side of the story. You could lose it all. The value of Bitcoin is wholly dependent on what investors are willing to pay at any point in time. Also, if a Bitcoin exchange folds, clients with Bitcoin balances have no recourse to get back to. There is nothing like FDIC for Bitcoin. The Bitcoin story is young and it is still trying to find its groove, which makes Bitcoin prices extremely volatile. The price of a Bitcoin can unpredictably increase or decrease over a short period of time. Never put your retirement money in Bitcoin. With Bitcoin, you are still speculating. It is a high-risk asset and you should never put money 
that you cannot afford to lose. Think about this as a science project. It will see its share of ups and downs. As adoption grows and technology matures, things should get better and more predictable. Bitcoin is not an official currency. It is not regulated or backed by any government. Having said that, you may still be expected to pay taxes on Bitcoins as an asset. With that said, I'm using Robinhood and eToro platforms to put my money to work. Let me know if you guys are interested in hearing more about these platforms when it comes to crypto. Here's the bottom line. Putting money in Bitcoin is still speculation. Recent backing from large corporations make me feel bullish. I don't know where this is going, but I'm ready to bet 2-4% to of my portfolio in Bitcoin. Also adds a bit of diversification to my portfolio. It is similar to betting on a new stock or any emerging technology out there. It could be a boom or a bust. We'll see. Thoughts, comments, are you guys in it? Drop me a comment. Like if this was helpful. Until next time, peace.